Hello and welcome to the AI Fundamentals section of the AIML Bootcamp. In this module, we'll review supervised and unsupervised machine learning techniques. We'll cover classification and regression techniques in supervised learning and clustering, dimensionality reduction and anomaly detection techniques in unsupervised learning. Understanding the differences between these approaches is crucial for selecting the right method for various data-driven tasks. Let's start with supervised learning. In supervised learning, model is trained on level data. That means data includes both the input and the correct option. If I'll explain with an example, this is just like teaching a child with flashcard. We first show the child a card with picture of an apple and tell him or her that it's an apple. After showing many such level cards, the child learned to recognize which is apple or which is other fruits. The similar analogy applied here. Let's try to understand how supervised learning work and we'll take an example of creating a machine learning model to recognize spam emails. We have label data set. In that label data sets, we have some email which is marked as not spam versus some emails which are actually spam. And we have the machine learning model. Now, once we'll train the model with this label data, and after training, model might create some kind of relations or correlations between those emails to identify which one is spam versus which one is a not spam. The machine learning model may come up with certain characteristics like if the email has some words like free, win or prize, then it can be a potential candidate for a spam email. Once the model is trained, now if we feed the new incoming emails which are not labeled, then the model will generate the predictions or inferences and it will distinguish the emails which are spam versus which are not spam. Next, we'll review classification. Classification is a type of supervised learning where we used to predict the categorical variables of output. That means here output variables is discrete and it will fall into one of a specific category or class. If you remember the previous example of identifying spam versus not spam emails, that was a perfect example of classification. Let's assume we have two different new emails, one with subject line win a free prize and the email two with the subject line meeting at 10 a.m. Now, once the model is trained, it can correctly classify the email one as spam and the email two is not spam. One point we'd like to highlight, the outcome should be always discrete or to a specific category. That means the email either can be classified as a spam or not a spam. There is no third status in between. There are some more use cases for the classification. If you want to predict whether a patient has a breast cancer or not, if you want to predict whether a credit card transaction is a fraudulent or a legit or not, if you want to predict whether a loan application will approve or deny, or if you want to classify image of corpse to detect diseases. So these are all different use cases or examples of classification model. And you can clearly see here the output will fall into one of the category. It cannot have a continuous value. Next, we'll review regression and what are the use cases for regression. Unlike classification, in regression supervised learning, we try to predict numerical values based on one or more input features. Let's take some examples. Maybe if you want to predict house price based on house size, location, and number of bedrooms, then it's an example of regression. Another one example could be predicting the future price of a stock based on its historical data. Let's review regression modeling steps. The first step is data collection. In this step, we gather historical data with input features and corresponding output values. 
If you see this example, we have a collection of house size, bedroom, location, year of build and the corresponding price for that house. So this we are going to use as an input data set for our model. Once we have the data collected, next step is data processing. In this process, we try to clean the data, we handle any missing values and also normalize the features if necessary. If you review this example, here we have a missing line and in the data processing, if we have any data with missing values and all, we can eliminate or we can add the respective values in that cell. For our example, we have eliminated. Then the next thing what we have done, we have year of build and it has all those years. But that year of build does not seem like a very important parameters for our pricing. That is why we have calculated house age from that. So it's an example of feature engineering that we are going to cover in a separate section. Now, part of the data processing is we are preparing the data for model training. Once the data is prepared, the next step is model training. In training phase, we use the training data set to train the machine learning model. During training, the model learns the relationship between the input parameters and the outcome. For our example, it will be the house price. Post model training, we perform model evaluation to assess the model's performance using statistical estimators metrics like mean squared error or R squared. Using these metrics, we try to understand the difference between the predicted and the actual values. And let's assume that we have reviewed, we have identified that this is the perfect model for our use case. The next and the final step is prediction, where you use the trained model to predict outcomes of the new data. For our example, we have taken two records for what we want to predict. Here we have the house size, number of bedrooms, city and the house age. Now based on that, the model will predict Maybe the house one price is predicted around 5,500K and house two price is predicted around 320K. In the certification exam, you might encounter some use cases and scenario and it will ask you to identify the machine learning algorithm like regression or classification. And if you see any use case to predict a category like email type is spam or not spam, then it is classification. But if the goal is to predict a quantity or a real value, then it's an example of regression. Now, if we relate both regression and classification, in both the models, the data is trained based on label data to make the prediction. For email spam, in previous example we saw where we determine the category of the email. That is, is it a spam or not spam? But when it comes to regression, maybe we can predict the length or the time it takes to read. Now, I hope you got a clear idea, the difference between classification and regression. And you have to understand it by your heart because you will encounter some use cases where you need to identify why regression or classification is the perfect model to select. Next, we'll review unsupervised machine learning algorithms. Unlike supervised learning, for unsupervised learning, we used unlabeled data. That is, for the data, there will be no tag or there will be no predefined values for those data. Let me try to explain with a real life example. Imagine you have a box filled with different toys, but they all are mixed up and you want to organize them into groups. You start by looking at the toys and noticing their features such as size, color, and types. For an example, maybe cars, dolls, blocks. Without any prior labels or instruction, you begin to sort the toys into groups based on their similarities. And let's assume that you have sort the cars and the soft toys into two different groups. Now, as you sort, you might discover new patterns or categories that you have not noticed before like separating the cars into small and large cars. By the end of this process, now you have organized the toys into meaningful group 
based on their feature even though no one told you how to do it and this is a perfect example of unsupervised machine learning under unsupervised machine learning the model discover hidden structure and learn patterns in the data in terms of benefit of unsupervised learning we can discover hidden pattern in stored data maybe you have transactional data for last 10 years 20 years and if you want to discover any hidden pattern this is the perfect use case if you want to find structure in data without even predefined label because when you have data in a bulk quantity labeling the data is always not easy or this is ideal for data exploration or maybe exploratory data analysis if you have any use cases for that then unsupervised machine learning is the perfect candidate now let's review some common techniques or algorithm that we can use for unsupervised learning the first is clustering and the algorithm name is k means clustering we'll review all those algorithms and techniques in the following slides the other technique is dimensionality reduction and the algorithm name is principal component analysis or pca maybe if you have a data set and you want to reduce the data set volume or if you want to make the data set to a smaller fragment then dimensionality reduction is the perfect technique and the third is anomaly detection and the algorithm name is isolation forest and amazon has their own proprietary algorithm called random cut forest so these are some type of common techniques or algorithm we use for unsupervised machine learnings in the following slides we are going to focus on those clusterings dimensionality reduction and anomaly detection and we'll have a deep dive for all those common techniques let's review unsupervised learning clustering under unsupervised learning clustering we group unlabeled data into k clusters based on the feature or similarities of the object the algorithm we used for the clustering technique is called k means clustering now you must be asking what is the meaning of k k will represent the number of clusters let's understand using a real life example let's assume a retailer and the retailer wants to create targeted marketing campaign for each customer segments and the retailer wants to offer personalized promotion and to enhance his customer satisfaction this is my use case now to summarize the use case what you want to do the retailer wants to segment the customer into different groups based on the purchasing behavior they have to start the process we need data now we need customer purchase history and that purchase history includes customer annual income customer spending habit and customer demography let's assume that we have some data let's say we have some customers or let's say we have the data like this customer 1 he or she purchase cosmetics the creams and the trendy garments customer 2 purchases baby food baby cosmetics customer 3 purchases grocery laundry supplies and also cosmetics like that way we have all the customer purchase history now when we'll feed the data into our machine learning model which will drive with k means clustering it is going to segregate the customer into different segments so after that the outcome will be it will group the customer into customer segments such as high spenders budget shoppers versus the occasional buyers and once the retailer will have the segment of the customers they can target their marketing campaign or the offers based on their purchasing habit now we will review dimensionality reduction another one unsupervised machine learning algorithm dimensionality reduction used to simplify a data set with many features for easier visualizations and analysis let's assume you have a huge data sets and there are many dimensions to the data sets maybe you have a table in that table there are many columns and most of the columns are not related to your use case dimensionality reduction will allow you to reduce or eliminate those columns 
which are not applicable for you. The algorithm used in this case called Principal Component Analysis or PCA. One of the use cases could be, let's say a tech company wants to reduce the storage of high resolution images or video without losing any significant details. And I believe it's a common use case even for everyone in today's world. In terms of process, our data set is high resolution images that has many pixels. And let's assume this is one of the image what I have taken from internet. Next, the principal component analysis, the algorithm, it will reduce the number of features while retaining most important information. And if I will break it, one image can have multiple layers and every layers will have pixels as it is broken into this diagram. Now it will start analyzing each and every pixels and it will try to identify what are the areas it can crop or what are the areas are not required. Now the outcome or the end goal is we got a compressed image that require less storage space but it will maintain the same visual quality. That means we are only reducing the size without even reducing its visual quality. The next unsupervised learning is anomaly detection. With anomaly detection, we try to identify unusual pattern or behaviors that are significantly deviates from the standard behavioral pattern. If you see in this diagram, our data set or our observation mainly lies between these two lines. If we see any observation which is far away from the normal, then it is a potential anomaly. One of the algorithm used in anomaly detection called isolated forest. Amazon also has its own proprietary algorithm called random cut forest. A common use case could be, let's assume a bank wants to detect fraudulent transaction in real time. And in terms of process, here my data set is all the financial transactional data that includes location, amount, time. Now, if we try to understand here, let's assume person A, every day he logs from San Francisco, maybe between 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. And normally he trade an amount of, let's say, $1,000. If at one point of time, if he is logging, let's say from Philippines, or maybe he is logging around 2 a.m. at night, or all of a sudden he is performing some huge amount of transactions that could be potential of a fraudulent transactions because this is not or this is beyond the normal behavior. The isolation forest algorithm identifies all the transactions that deviates significantly from the natural pattern. This is one example of isolation forest graph that I have taken from internet. You can see this pattern or this transaction or this data point is far away from the regular patterns. That is why the algorithm detects as a potential fraudulent transactions. And the outcome could be all the flagged suspicious transactions could be go for a further investigation or review. And by this way, we are saving lot of manual errors because all the transactions not required to be reviewed. Only those flagged transactions need an human intervention. This example shows how unsupervised learning algorithm can be applied to solve practical problems in various industries. I hope now you have a strong understanding on different supervised versus unsupervised learning techniques. That wraps up this module. I hope this session helped you gain a deeper understanding and brought you one step closer to your learning goals. Thank you very much for watching and learning with us at Cloud Expert Solution. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more update, and feel free to drop any question or feedback in the comments. We would love to hear from you. See you in the next module.